Good morning. Let's take a look at some of the Telegram calls yesterday. What was a profitable tennis trading day? With a little help from our friends, Kostiuk, about to lose the first set. 1.3 favourite pre-match, so I decided to take on now then, now then, how's about, how's about, Seville. And we got there in the end, but uh, the next play, Hubert Hercats. I thought there was a bit of value to be had at 2.72, given his record in coming back when odds on favourite. This is the Kostiuk match. Despite the fact that she's broken serve twice, she has been broken four times. This is an appalling uh, performance from Kostiuk. But I kept the faith. You know what 2-5 can do. All she needs to do, and as you can see there, 30 love, break the next game, 3-5, hold serve, make it 4-5, break again, and we're back on track. I know, it's a simple job, isn't it? This was the Kostiuk match. What I did, I averaged. So, for example, I know I was telling you in the telegram I was laying Seville at 1.07. That's what her odds were. I think what I did was back Kostiuk at 22s. And I backed Kostiuk at about 10s as well. That way, the liability increases markedly. That's the negative, but it brings the break-even average nearer to the current odds. So it doesn't take much for Kostiuk, the, the odds movement, for me to create a break-even. Even better if she can extricate herself out of that 2-5 mess she found herself in with four breaks and three breaks herself. And she did. I, I got out. But good news for you, she went on and won the match. Bad news for me, I had £630 waiting on Kostiuk, which would have come in. Oh, man, what I could do with that 630 quid. Oh. So, tennis trading, it could also be called in-play value betting, couldn't it, if you left it? Uh, you could have laid Seville... At 1.07, as I alluded to. This was uh, Grigor Dimitrov in a spot of bother against uh, Mr. Shang, which is Guernsey slang for a bicycle, a Shang, a push hang. Going down the town in my push hang. Grigor Dimitrov, again, another one needing to win two consecutive sets to stay in the tournament. This was an early, this was before the second set was even concluded. You have an opportunity to guarantee a return without the heartache of the fluctuations in the price if Dimitrov doesn't deliver. So don't forget that. Once it's green and you've locked it in, nothing else matters. Hercats, <coughs> start of the recovery. Two sets down again, and perfect opportunity in the Grand Slam tennis for you to get stuck in, because Hercats must win the next two sets. And I think he retired at 8-8 in a tiebreaker in the fifth. He retired so close to ending the match. I don't understand. Why can't you just see the match out? Oh, dear. But we greened up. It doesn't matter. All these... Uh, fluctuations and any particular uh, something that we can't see or can't predict, like the Rublev smashing his left knee with his racket. All of that doesn't matter if you've greened up. This was Pagula. And she did actually go on and win the second set, but I'm afraid I was making uh, good profits. I didn't want to throw it away, so I decided to cash out just on the cusp of her winning the second set, which was a real pity. This went into a tiebreak, and I've had, I've had enough tiebreak, heartbreak uh, to get out. But uh, wouldn't you know it, the second consecutive match where I bailed on a tiebreak, the player I needed to win has gone on and won the tiebreaker. 
This was uh, Katie Bolter. I was talking to you about this. Uh, should have stuck with her and uh, loaded up, to be honest. Hillary Dart's Harriet Dart. I keep calling her Hillary. Hillary Dart. Oh, Harriet Dart went down to about 1.18 today. A great performance from Katie Bolter. Great performance from Dart. This is a reminder to you, as I keep saying, when two Brits or two fellow countrywomen, countrymen meet each other, they do know each other's game a lot more than the odds suggest. 1.25 for Bolter. But she got it, came in and got the win yesterday. Uh, I got out because of the fact it's Brit v Brit. So some really good stuff yesterday. I was delighted with the, the shouts. There's that Kostiuk. Look at that return. Second set. Absolutely outstanding. 630 quid in the bag there. I had on Dimitrov about £200 profit if he went on and won without me cashing out. Look at this. Dart actually won the third match, the third set in a tiebreaker. This is a gentle reminder to you about the heartache of tiebreakers. Wang went and won the third set, but Pagula won the second. That's all I'm interested in as a trader. On Jabur continuing on her merry way, along with a few others. We didn't have much late action, but I suppose you could have taken on Caroline Wozniacki winning the first set, but she has been excellent, as I've warned you, in the run-up to Wimbledon. Back to her old self. Some late plays, didn't really get involved. Taylor Fritz, another 2-0 two, two to 2-1. Two you see this a lot, as I've alluded to. Uh, Draper and Norrie, a bit like uh, Dart and Bolter. It could be any way, couldn't it? And you see, look, Cameron Norrie beating Jack Draper. This is an experience from Draper, I think. And it's also Norrie knowing his fellow countrymen. So be very careful. You can get the upset. Mepeshi Pericard is starting to put together, put together some good results after getting through in three tiebreakers, I think it was. So he has a bit of fight about him. Uh, Football-wise yesterday, I didn't stay up for this, but uh, did you? We've got a 1-1 one -one here. Two red cards, did they come at the end of the match or in between? Well, 79th minute onwards. We did get a penalty in reaction to this one, I think. But uh, it's just suffering from uh, the Euros, the Premier Division, First Division. The form lines have just gone. Uh, press the pause button. You don't know whether they're going to pick up. So Sligo Rovers win against the odds. Somewhat Rovers 1.33. Just shuffling to a 1-0 win. Very poor performance for a 1.3 favourite. 0-1. <clears throat> you could have done an insurance play on this one. Because Bray did look quite strong. Or well, maybe not. Very, very late winner there. So all messy form, I think, yesterday. Largely, the Euros has something to do about that because these sides have been put on pause. On to today. We're back to the Euros today. Spain against Germany, Portugal against France. Note the odds. 2.7, 2.38, the favourite. There's absolutely nothing I can tell you about any angles in this evening. It's too tough to call. I have done the research for you, which says... Prediction 3-1 Spain against Germany, which is interesting. Portugal against France. Apparently Portugal have a poor record. Portugal 1-1 against France. Portugal to win on penalties, perhaps. More tears from Ronnie. Kylian Mbappe to score any time. I thought uh, Antoine Griezmann. He just looks absolute class when I saw him in his previous match. One-touch football. Perfect passing. And a wonderful haircut. Wonderful new Dyed haircut for the mighty Antoine. So that's it football-wise today. It is my day off today, but I've been really enjoying the tennis, as I hope you have. There is money to be made there. Daria Kazakina, I'll be looking at her today. Madison Keyes still retains odds on favourite status for the third consecutive round, I think. Uh, 1.07 Goff playing the cartel. The Sinaloa cartel. A Brit. Worth laying. Goff, particularly if she wins the first set. <laughs> Foggy has, it has had an excellent run. Uh, three, two consecutive 3-0 set wins. His last one, very impressive against Van Asher. Uh, not favourite today, Foggy, but I think he'll give Batista Rugut something to think about. 
Nakashima and Humbert, this looks very tight. And Nakashima has been an excellent uh, player to follow, particularly when odds on favourite. So this, you'd suggest, could be a five-setter. Struff against Medvedev. I think Struff would set, could take a set or two off Daniel Medvedev today. He's excellent on grass. He's dropping down the rankings consistently. Number 41. Solid player. Medvedev, you saw at 1.03, did struggle. <clears throat> he was nearly two sets down. So I wouldn't take these odds to heart. I think it's going to be a battle for Medvedev today. If he's 2-0 up, I certainly lay him. Alcaraz has got to be laid just at the off. You saw he got beaten by Jack Draper in Eastbourne. Uh, Dimitrov, brilliant performance for Grigor. He's going to be a little tired. Uh, that was a five-setter, I believe, battling from two sets down. Brought me home, I think, a £68 profit on the Dimitrov match. Again, it could have been about £268 had I stayed in. Yannick Sinner, the Sinner man, got to be laid at 1.04, as I hope you're realising. So it's a smaller band today. We are affected by the rain. So there is rain delay. Nothing I can do about that. It is my day off, so don't expect me to be covering the tennis. But highly likely I will be up and around for 11am and I will be doing it myself because I've been making money from this too and I'm keen to make a few quid watching. Well, not watching, but uh, just watching the score lines. I don't even watch the tennis. I'm just <clears throat> using my little techniques and I know picking up little bits on players now and again. But I'm still a little bit... Uh, I've got to solve the problem of letting a full stake go to finality. Like with uh, Goff, not, uh, not Goff, with uh, Osaka the other day. Am I going to have to put in something like... Uh, Get out at a third of liability is loss, maybe. Or set yourself a stop loss. We've got fair bot. So we have fair bot. We've got uh, trailing stop losses. I've never used this uh, element of fair bot for actual trading. I have with the experimented with the horses where you get a one tick offset, which means if you back at 4.1, you want to lay off at 4.08, that kind of thing. Swap. We'll back at the lay odds, lay at the back odds. Uh, but I've never really looked at this stop loss. Trigger at two ticks. Place stop at five ticks. Uh, trailing stop loss. That could be a good idea for the tennis, couldn't it? Because if, it, if it's going your way, you want to try to lock in as much profit as possible. Having a trailing stop loss, you will make sure that you get a profit. And you'll make sure also that you don't get on the wrong end of a collapse like Kostiuk nearly had yesterday. That would have cost us yet again. So uh, <clears throat> just some little elements of the tennis. I'm really enjoying it. I've got a simple technique. I'm not using uh, places like tennisprofits.com, use service stats. I don't see the point. It's rather like the football. It's what happens in play that counts. And you can take, you can have a look at the in-play stats in play. I think that's, the way to use stats, not waste your time pre-match researching every little nook and cranny. You can tell using the point-by-point -point structure here, all the stats, you can have a look at the whole match or at set one or set two. I like to look at the whole match. What I'm looking at for me is the amount of break points converted. That for me is a good signal. As you can see here, seven break points for Badoza against Frutova. So could be a battle. She's doing enough. And Frutova has only saved one of those. So no wonder she lost 2-0. That's the key for me. I haven't sussed out the importance of first serve percentages yet or any other elements here. But this is an excellent set of stats. It's just uh, trying to solve the reading of them. But so far, I'm honing in on break points converted or at least break points generated. We had an instance the other day, a player was losing. She losing, lost the first set, but generated 10 break points. So that's a clear indication you go into the second set because she's got that ability 
to pressurize her opponent's serve. And that's what I look at as well, pressurizing the serve. So you'll need to look at the first set, for example. You want to see whether Badoza, if she's favorite, pressurizes the Fritova serve. So that's a Fritova serve there. Pressure, 30-30, that's what I look at. <clears throat> Not the huge pressure there. Pressure here, look, break point, break point, 30-30 again. 40-40, move down, and it lurches to an easy game. So we've got that pattern. Every second Fritova serve has been pressurised by Badoza. So those are little elements that you, I'm trying to pick up. My ten, tennis is nowhere near, tennis knowledge is nowhere near as uh, good as it is with the football. Uh, I tend to pick up the football stats a lot easier and uh, remember the patterns a lot easier but I've got a lot here gaps in knowledge I don't know these players Osorio Volnets etc but I'll be on hand I hope today at 11 for you but please do remember it is my day off I do need a day off now and again uh, but uh, because I want to work for you on Saturday and Sunday as well and England are out, I think, tomorrow, aren't they, against the Swiss. Park that Toblerone in front of the goal. So I'll see you throughout the day. The football today, better watched and enjoyed rather than traded, unless you wanted to back nil-nil pre-match, uh, because these are going to be nervy affairs. You can almost sense it, can't you? A Derby-style match for both of these two, and the odds are suggestive as well, 2.7, 2.38. You'll notice throughout August to April, I bring up these odds. They just tell you that the market makers can't split the sides. So the market makers, people who are paid to try to solve the problem, can't find a favourite or a strong favourite, then what chance have you got? So please use the odds and take the hint. The odds tell a story, don't they? 1.34 at home, you'd be expectant of that. 1.07, you're expecting three-plus goals from Glenorchy Knights in Tasmania. And this is a local derby, Launceston, Launceston United. So those odds might be a little uh, shaky if it's a derby-style match. So have a great day. I hope to be up on Telegram for you <coughs> at 11am. But please uh, don't guarantee that. But I'm enjoying the tennis trading. I hope you are. Great day yesterday. So many green screens. That's the way you like it. So many 2 nils to 2 twos in the men's game. That's the way we like it as well. And reliable sorts like Hercats and Grigor Dimitrov getting in a, a big spot of bother. And Kostiuk as well. My 630 quid I could still dream. Oh, man. So have a great day. I might see you on Telegram, members of footballtradingprofits.com. Looks another excellent day of the of tennis <laughs>